The big question a lot of you Longhorn fans will be debating in the next few days, maybe the next few weeks, will be, is it time to fire Fred Akers? Because today the Longhorns lost a bowl game for the fourth year in a row. Air Force strafed them in the Blue Bonnet Bowl 24-16. to Some Longhorn fans were trying not to think of this game as the Cotton Bowl consolation, and they had to be happy early when Brett Stafford dropped back and then dropped a bomb on the Air Force defense. 34 yards to William Harris, it was 7-0 Texas. Air Force was ready to fly high though. Pat Evans breaks loose on the quick hitter right up the middle. Looks like he's gonna break this one for a touchdown, but he's hauled down on the Texas two after a 48-yard gain. On the next play, Greg Pachesniak goes wide left for the score. That tied it up at seven all. Bevo did not seem very pleased, huh? On the following kickoff, weird play here. It's a short kick. It's a free ball, you know, after it goes 10 yards. It takes an Air Force bounce near the 30. The Falcons swarm onto it. They have it, and they're in great field position. A couple of plays later, Bart Weiss calls his own number, and it was 14-7 favor of the Falcons. Go to the second half now, 14-10 the score. So they give the ball to Pat Evans again. He goes 19 yards for the touchdown. Evans with 129 yards on the day, 21-10 Air Force. Two Jeff Ward field goals made it 21-16, so the Longhorns still had a shot till two minutes remain in the game, but then Stafford threw this ball into the hands of Ron Wilson, and that ended Texas's hopes. And after a late Air Force field goal, the final in that game was 24-16, favor of Air Force. So the Longhorns finish the season 8-4, and four, and get ready. You can bet the dump acres talk will get louder and more frequent. Meanwhile, Texas A&M coach Jackie Sherrill probably going to be up late tonight, not celebrating, though, maybe figuring out how to stop Bo Jackson of Auburn in tomorrow's Cotton Bowl game. The Aggies are going to have their hands full with Bo, no question about that. But Auburn coach Pat Dye says when he takes a look at the Aggies and what they've done this year, he knows they're going to be tough, too. Right now, probably is one of the top teams in the country. And uh, I think that uh, they're playing at the top of the game. A young football team has gotten better as the year has gone along. And uh, they really don't have a weakness. They're good offensively and defensively. They have great team speed, and, and they're playing well. Now, our Randy Sparaghi is going to be up there tomorrow along with photographer Coy Hobson, so be sure to tune in for their post-game report tomorrow night here on News 4. Two other bowl games to report to you today. It was Army over Illinois in the Peach Bowl and the All-American Bowl. The game just ended a few minutes ago. Michigan State loses to Georgia Tech 17-14. to Spurs are spending New Year's Eve in Sacramento tonight. They'll be taking on the Kings there Thursday, trying to get a winning streak going after their five-gamer was snapped in Portland last night. No games on the NBA schedule this evening, but there is news about New Jersey Nets guard Michael Ray Richardson. He turned himself into the NBA today, saying he is battling a drug problem again. Now, the league has ruled that since he turned himself in, he can undergo drug rehabilitation at team expense, even though this is his third offense, and that could get him kicked out of the league for life. He has been suspended indefinitely, though. He will not be paid during the suspension or the rehabilitation. Okay, on a much, much happier note, sort of. During my sportscast all this week, I'll be looking back at some of the highlights and lowlights of 1985. And right now, we're going to take a look at some of the more embarrassing moments from baseball. You just can't hide your eyes to moments like this. You have to shake them off. That's all there is to it. Worst double play toss of the year goes to Tony Fernandez of Toronto. Worst throw from the outfield, Lonnie Smith, Kansas City. Shortest pitch of 85, Dwight Gooden of the New York Mets. Love that one. Worst communication of the year, Ed Lynch and Keith Hernandez of the Mets on this roller. Worst eyesight of the year, Dave Rosen of the Rangers on this ball that was out of sight, if not necessarily out of mind. Speaking of out of sight, how about Tom Brookins going over the rail near third base and down into there. Mike Davis going into the stands in right field, just pulls his disappearing act. Reggie Jackson takes a swing and then just runs right out of the picture. See you later, Reggie. And before you think this whole thing is for the birds tonight, check out this little kitty who just about needed nine lives to escape the ground screw in this game. Ooh, I'm not sure who it was tougher on, the kitty or the ground screw. <laughs> well, anyhow, that's it. Our hats off to everyone who gave us some chuckles in 1985, and you can bet there'll be a <laughs> lot more of the same in 86. Wait a Happy minute. Happy New Year, everybody. Adam Sparagi worked his way into that. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't say that. He's in Dallas. I can, I can get away with that. You're dead. Have a good New Year.